Welcome to the GAA Museum Book Club for Kids, where we're choosing books for younger readers. For August, we read Celtic Spirit by Jared Siggins. Please enjoy our chat with Jared, where he talks about his work. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the second installment of our uh, GA Museum Kids Summer Reading Book Club. Uh, we're absolutely delighted to have uh, Jared Siggins, who's the author of Gaelic Spirit. It's one of the old Madden books, and that was our choice for August. And he's here to chat with me about it today. Um, thank you so much for taking the time in August to chat with us, Jared. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. And I, I suppose a perfect summer book because, first of all, it's set during the summer holidays. So that was perfect for us. Um, and I know that we'll get into, I suppose, the series and the character of Owen Madden in a minute. But first, you might tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a sports journalist, which I suppose helps a bit in terms of writing about sport. But yeah, um, the, the way the books came about has a lot to do where, where I live and where I grew up because uh, I grew up maybe 50 metres from the back gate of Lansdowne Road. Right. So when I was a kid, that became my, my playground. It was where we used to go to for, for sport, for crack. And then um, we used to do all sorts of mad adventures running around the ground, like we'd have races up and down the stands and, wow. and uh, uh, all that sort of thing. And it was a nice old groundsman who sometimes would let us go out and play on the pitch. So uh, that was always a bit of fun as well. So I've scored more tries and goals and... Lance on Road and Johnny Sexton and Robbie Keane and all those lads put together. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. So you started out then as a sports journalist. Were you just covering general sports or were specific sports? Yeah, no, as as you do when you start off, you're you're writing about everything. You're writing yeah. about every sport there is and you get your chance wherever you can. Um, eventually, I became more specialised on, on different sports. The sport that I, I wrote the most about was cricket. Yeah. Um, it was a sport that I've always liked. Um, and uh, they used to play it actually in in, in uh, Jones's Road. Yes, there was a, it is. There was, a, there was a great cricket around there at one stage. Yeah, and Michael Cusack was a a, a, yeah. a cricket fan and initially yeah. as well. Yeah, so there is there a links. lot of a lot of links between between all the sports at different stages. But yeah, no, that, yeah. that's the sport I used to write a lot. And like, because Ireland were very good for the last fifteen years or so, I've uh, I've got to see a lot of the world because of it. Yeah, you know, which is nice. So yeah. I'm just, I'm so a lot too. of people, a lot of people will be just happy with that. Then that sounds nice. Writing about a sport you like, going around the world, traveling, uh, getting to great, see great places and sports matches. So why did you take it upon yourself to to write or to write books? Um, that's a whole different, I suppose, a discipline. Yeah, it's a completely different thing. I had been writing a few um, non-fiction books, I suppose, books about sport. Right. The history of um, of Lansdowne Road, partly because of the fact of it was a place that meant a lot to me because I lived so close to it. Um, and I came across a story when I was writing the book about Lansdowne about a fella called Brian Hanrahan, who is, is only famous for one thing, and that is that he was the only person ever to die playing sport in Lansdowne Road. He was killed playing rugby a long time ago, 90, more than 90 years ago. And his story was very, um, it had a big impact on me because I'd never heard of it before and I'd never really... Um, like I said, his his name was never mentioned in any of the, yeah. the histories. So I got to I got to I decided to read a lot about Brian and found out a lot more about him. And it became a whole chapter in, in that book. And he sort of stayed with me as as a as a as an idea. I, I go for walks a lot around Lansdowne Road because it's where I live. And um, I used to do a lap of the stadium every night, and I'd always look in through the tunnel, and I'd often think of Brian. And he sort of stayed with me. And yeah. Year, year, a couple of years later, I suppose, I was writing, I was making up stories for my son, of the little fella who's not a little fella anymore, but he went, when he was about seven or eight, I used to have to tell him a bedtime story every night. And um, we, we, went, we got through all the books, and when I used to turn off the light, I'd have to make up a story. And he used to make up stories about, about sport, because that's what he was into. And I made up a story about him becoming, going to a, an old soccer ground and meeting a ghost and the ghost giving him lots of hints and tips about becoming a better player. Yeah. And Billy went off and, you know, in, in, in my story, Billy took these hints and tips and became a better player. And by the end of the story, which took about a year to finish, by the end of that story, Billy was playing for Newcastle in the Premier League. Like, you know, <laughs> the story just went, went, went wild. But he loved it. He thought it was great. And he kept telling me to write it down and make it a yeah. good book. And... 
I never did. I just didn't have the time. And then the paper I worked for, I worked for the Sunday Tribune paper, which closed down. And I had a bit of free time. So I sat down and wrote Billy's story as, as a book. And uh, it didn't work. It, was, it just didn't really work as a story. Yeah. And I was out for a, for a walk one night in my lap of Lansdown Road. And, uh, and I saw, I just looked down the tunnel and thought of Brian. And I just had this brainwave to turn it into, turn Billy's story into a book about about rugby and, and set it in Lansdown Road and set it with this ghost of Brian Hanran. And, uh, and it did, and it, and it worked, and it took off. And, and I've written, now I've just written the 10th book in the series. Yeah, so the uh, one we sorry, read. Sorry, the, ninth, the ninth, the ninth. The one we read uh, was the eighth one, I think. The yeah, I did seven eight rugby eight. books. And then yeah. Owen, Owen, my hero, is, is home for Hollows. That's where we'll talk about yeah. that later. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, that, that was, that's where it all came from. And it was just something that was like a bedtime story that suddenly became a monster. Wow, that's amazing. But I think a lot of um, really well-received kids' books do start off with the author just telling to their kids. I know, I think The Tiger Who Came to Tea, which is yeah. one of the biggest picture books of, of all time. I think that was the same. She just made that for her kids. So it's probably you're coming from a good place because you, you have an audience that's going to tell you straight away if it's good or bad, I suppose. Exactly, yeah. He, he did tell me that lots of things are bad and good. So <laughs> it was a, I mean, he was, he's, a, he's a harsh critic, but he... But, but to be honest, it was, if it wasn't for him, I would never have done these. And that was uh, that was great. And what um, uh, what did he think then when the book came out, the first one? Oh, he was delighted and he was been very happy. He read he read the first two or three and I don't think he's read any of them since. And he's just, you know, Getting he's moved on. He's in college now, really. Yeah. And he's a big boy now, but he's um, he certainly read the first two and then really enjoyed them. I told me he enjoyed them anyway. And I suppose it's good to have one book, but then a whole other thing to try and do a series was, did you think it was going to be a one-off or how did the series oh, come no. about? Yeah, it was only ever going to be a one-off. It was just Billy's book. This is what it was. And, yeah. and I never, I never imagined it would be a series. And when I sent, I, 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 I the book I'd written on Last Down Road, I, I sent it to my publisher, O'Brien Press, and they really liked it. And uh, they said, why don't you go off and write a sequel? Yeah. And, and I'd never considered it until then. And again, it took, it took a bit of time to, to do it and it developed, you know, but it eventually happened. And uh, pretty much every year since I've done wow. one, one and I know. book. And kids book, kids like sequels. And I suppose that's how it works. A lot it of does, the, yeah, the and, big ones you know, are, are it, series. It, yeah, they sell each other as well. Because when yeah. you book out, people start from the beginning. And it means I've got a completely new audience every year which is brilliant yeah so i go yeah. out to a lot of schools and libraries and, and talk to the kids about re- the, my books on about writing and reading and uh, they all you know every every eight nine ten year old um is new is a new reader to me which is brilliant it's- it's brilliant too because a lot, you know they're they're very specifically Irish, which is nice for for kids. Well, I, I only know the one I, you know I've read as Gaelic Spirit. I haven't read the other ones yet, but um, you know it is nice because there there's stuff in it you know that you can relate to just purely of Ireland. Even I think there was a scene in Gaelic Spirit where the kids are hanging around outside the chipper, uh, you know, different things like that. You know, it really just remind yeah really captured it. So do you find that hard, especially that your own child is older now? Like how do you I suppose keep current or you know you don't want to preach to kids you want to write about kids like in a way that they understand and, and feel is real oh yeah very much so i mean I, I i get a lot of feedback from kids which is brilliant yeah um, i get a lot of emails and, and uh, letters to o'brien press saying you know i like this about your books i don't like this about your books um why don't you write about this and that and then when yeah. i go to, to schools i get some fantastic feedback um, and, and i you know i feed off that and uh, it, it, I definitely, definitely get a lot of that into the books. And do you think because the books are about sport, they maybe encourage people who might necessarily be classed as readers or pigeonholed as readers to take them up? Do you ha- would, have kids ever said that to you? Yeah, to be honest, that's the best crack of, of all about writing books like yeah. this. And it's something that I never, I never discovered before. Is I, I kept getting calls from, from teachers and, and from parents saying, you, you won't believe it, but my kid I've been trying to get him to read a book for years and he never had anything he wanted to read and so right. because it was something that they liked you know was whether it's rugby or Gaelic or, or football yeah. the new book and um, it's something that they can relate because they're because they're sports mad and I think a lot of boys around eight and nine sort of lose interest in books or lose 
you know, they're too busy doing other things. It's Which a reason for the day to be because you're off buzzing around the streets and, and the fields and doing things you want to do. Um, whereas books in some ways are something that are part of school, but they can't think there's so much more than that. And I think yeah. when I, I get when I get a, a message from a teacher or a, or a parent saying my son never read a book before and he decided he loves yours and he's read them all twice. I mean, that's just the best, the best thing ever it really is. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. So, so how do you go about, for I suppose, from getting your idea into a book, and how does so some of us wouldn't really understand, I suppose, the process of that, um, you know, of what it has to go through. How first of all, how you plan your story? Is it organic? Uh, and then I suppose the whole publishing process. How does it all work? Well, yeah, it's. I mean, because I have established characters now, and I, you know, everybody knows, or you know, Owen, I know Owen yeah. inside out. It's it's and I've sort of created this little world around the school he goes to and and the town he's from that it, it, you know it, it can find that's that makes it easy in a way yeah um, because, because it's a series but no I mean I, I when I set up the series when it became a series if you like I decided that I wanted it to be different every book to be different I didn't want yeah. it just to be Owen and Brian the ghost and the hero I wanted I want other things to happen in the book. I got this idea that I wanted the books to be about famous other other each 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 book would have a new ghost. Right. And that ghost would be somebody who had played played rugby in that case of Brian. And in case of in case of the rugby books. But also had had lived through interesting times or had an interesting life. So I found I started finding people or discovering people or or bringing people into my books who 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 had that who fitted that bill. Um so the second book is about a fella called Dave Gallagher, who was the New Zealand rugby captain, born in Donegal, moved to New Zealand as, as, a, as a baby, and he became the first captain of the All Blacks. And he was killed in the First World War. I mean, there was a, there's a life already, it's such a full life. And he was an amazing story. And so uh, his ghost appears to Owen, and they have an adventure together. In the third book I came across, um, I, I used the, the story of Kevin Barry, who was a a schools rugby player who was became a a Republican activist in the in the in the in the um, what you call it the the war of the independence right. and, and, yeah. and he he you know he was killed there as well so all these fellows had you know they lived in really interesting parts of history and they lived I didn't stories. realize that that there was a, a link in each of the books yeah oh, there one, good. yeah there's a man called Prince Obolensky who who was a Russian prince his family fled Russia during the First World War during the revolution he moved to england became a brilliant rugby player scored the most famous try ever for england and was killed in the in the second world war as a, as a pilot so you know these are really amazing lives yeah, amazing yeah. stories That's and their nice. stories come in and help owen in his in his adventures and his, his sporting career as well so you obviously like history as well yeah, yeah very much so history is my is my other big passion as well i've always found history to be a, a big part of it and obviously then in the gaelic book um it's the story of michael hogan from from grage mokler who, who was killed on, on bloody sunday in crow park i was just going to say like i suppose the it, it was an obvious one in a way and that it happened on a pitch and you know it's a sport it's only across the up the road from you as well um but i suppose was that one harder to tackle the sub did you find that that one maybe had to be treated more sensitively or because the subject matter and we were approaching the anniversary at the 100 years or how did you deal with that yeah i mean it is clearly a very sensitive story and yeah i mean i think all my books are are sensitive and i, I do tread the line quite carefully because you know you're talking you're, you're writing for children yeah you know you don't want to be don't be putting things in their heads that are that are unfair or untrue or whatever so yeah. One of the one of the rules I made for myself was that when I'm writing about a real person, and like I said, there's a real person in every book, I won't do anything at all that would that changes their story in any way, because it's their story, and I'm not yeah. gonna, I don't have the right to do that. No, I put I put words in their mouth because that's what writers have to do. Um, but I always make sure that I stay true to, to their stories as well. And it's not just Michael Hogan's ghost in this; it's also um, Owen gets to. To meet and witness um, the death of the three little boys who were killed on, on Bloody Sunday as well. And yeah, that that's you know it's really important that you stay true to their stories as well and, and tell them as well and as honestly as you can. And 
Madden. So that, that, that's how that worked out. Uh, interestingly, I'm actually a grandniece of Michael Hogan, so my granny is was his sister. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. so, yeah, but uh, I think he dealt with it very well. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, but and as well, I suppose the subject has been on all of our minds in the museum because last year was the the hundred years. So you know, it was it was a great time, and it's a nice way for kids to access history. You know, through yeah. this, it's a way into the story for them because sometimes I think maybe we. Um, you know, we think, oh, children shouldn't be told about these things. And of course they should. Um, and I think this is a, a really nice way into it for them. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I enjoyed it. So what do you re do some like a factual research then or uh, for these stories before, I suppose, before the book's finished or before you start or what way yeah, does it work? Yeah, I certainly would. I mean, I would have read the biographies of Kevin Barry. Yeah. Dave Gallagher and obviously Michael Foley's brilliant book about about Bloody Sunday, the Lovely Yeah, Crew. we read that in our adult book club. Actually, that's very good. Yeah, it's a fantastic yeah. book. It really is. Yeah. And I, I mean, I read it twice, and um, and I obviously drawn very much on Michael's uh, story of what happened on the day in terms of um, when when Owen gets to meet Perry and William and and uh, the other boys who, who yeah were yeah. Um, and I don't want to go too much into the book in case someone's watching it that hasn't read it yet. So I don't want to give too okay. much away. But um, uh, I, I, there's a, th a few things that struck me about it uh, from when I was a younger reader. Um, and I, a comment has come in actually on this on the email. Um, Kids love mysteries. Um, how do you plot a mystery or how do you know? How do you know how it's going to work out? Do you know at the start? I have to know at the start, really, because yeah. otherwise. Um, but I would do a lot of my books would be. I plot them out quite carefully, I suppose you'd say, um, in that I, I, I would always, I'd actually spend about six months writing a book in my head before I nice. ever start typing a word. Um, I, I do a lot of thinking about things through and I'd, you know, I'm out for a walk, I'm, I'm, I'm changing the plots and working out what, what's going to happen next. Yeah. And only at, only when I've got all that worked out, I always sit down and I write it, write it down myself, or, you know, make notes. But you always leave a little bit loose there just to try and you know make it interesting and make it um make it make it more interesting for yourself as well yeah. i suppose that you enjoy the process of writing it but yeah if you're if you've got a mystery you've got to work out you know what's going to happen who's involved what's going to happen and how it's solved so they're all start they're all there from start at the very start and do you stick to strict rules, I suppose, about writing books, about story arcs and three C, you know, three parts of the story? Yeah. Or, or I don't have a clue about any of that stuff, but never. That's interesting. Any... Yeah, I, I, I often wonder that about authors. Like, do they do that or is it just a thing that happens? And is it people who try, maybe want to be authors that aren't that? Because if I was doing it, I'd probably be very, too, probably too prescriptive about it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I've never, I've never read... I've never done a, a writing course or read a book about how to write. It's, I suppose I've read a lot. I've read an awful lot of, uh, and I've read a lot of mysteries as well as history. Yeah. Things I like reading as well. It's so probably I just you know, Yeah, you know how to pace a book. Um, yeah. maybe, but it's not something that you sit down and work out a plot from, you know, this has to be done this way. Um, I think That's... I find that really difficult to, to be that callous or cynical about something yeah, like that. Yeah, I that, I get you. So no, I couldn't I couldn't get that at all. I, uh, so no, I I don't really have a formula to follow for the books, but I suppose, you know, you do set up the story, you 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 bring in the little hints about what might be going on, you drop in a few clues for, for the for the, the reader to pick it up on the yeah. second time round if they want to read it. Um, and then obviously things develop and, and, and rush to a conclusion and um, if he finds out what's going on as well. Interesting. I'm just looking through some of the questions that came in. Um, we might stick to the just the Gaelic spirit one, which I have here, uh, just for a, a second. So for it, you were, I suppose, more focused on rugby before. Was it hard to change then to GAA or, or would you be a fan as well? Oh, yeah, no, I'm absolutely a fan. Yeah, like I said, yeah. I, I was just tweeting this morning how both my brothers have played and scored goals in Crow Park. Wow. Uh, this is as close as I've ever got to it. So it's a great honour to be uh, involved in the Crow Park Book Club. So yeah, Brilliant. no, I went, to, I went to school, played a bit of bit of, bit of football in school. Um 
and I've always followed sport. like I think most people in Ireland you you follow all the sports and you watch all the sports and yeah the big days yeah you cheer on your your, your club or your county um and I I noticed during when I was reading the book the dialogue is very good I think it's really well written and there's a couple of things in that a it's very difficult to write good dialogue anyway and b it must be even more difficult to write it as a child because you're you're not obviously and then thirdly there's obviously some female characters and I think you've written them very well so how do you manage to do all of that <laughs> yeah I suppose I mean it is my 10th novel so it, yeah. in a way or more sorry I've written 11 books for kids now so you, I suppose you do get better at it um, yeah. But um, I'm glad you said about, about, about the female characters because it's something that I that I'd worried about because because when I set up the book first, it was obviously a boys' sport at a boys' boarding school. So uh, I wanted to bring female characters in, and, and I used to get stick in some of the schools I visited. Why I didn't have any, so I brought in Kiva, Dylan's sister. Yeah. Her, there are a couple of others as well, but um, I, I eventually wrote a second series of books. Um, she, they're up on the wall here beside me. Um, we, which female characters are actually at the centre of it? Um, ah, very good. Okay. Which, um, a, it's a, I'll give you a, a thirty-second guide to those books. It's, it's about five kids who were taken off to an island in the Atlantic, in Clue Bay, which turns into a submarine, and they go off and they learn how to be brilliant sports people. In, they're taken all around the world to learn off the best coaches. Wow. The, the first one's about football. The second one's about rugby, which is a uh, the, the woman called Kim, the girl called Kim, is the uh, and they are going to play in the rugby World Cup for kids and that sort of stuff. But the third book, which I'm working on at the moment, is about uh, a lad called um, God, I've forgotten his name. Uh, I think his name is Asif, and he's from Kilkenny, and he's from an Asian family who moved to Kilkenny, and he is. A brilliant hurler and a brilliant cricketer. And um, he puts the two sports together and learns the skills from both he brings together and uh, wow. he, he becomes a great little player. So he's going to be the centre of the third book, um, which will hopefully be out next year. Oh, that's brilliant. You have a great imagination. I just, it's amazing like uh, how you keep going and, and just keep keep writing. I mean, obviously, really enjoy it. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's 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 my hobby now at this stage. I really yeah. enjoy it. If I've got, you know. If I've got a couple of hours free and it's raining outside, there's nothing better than to get in for yourself in, in, the, in this world. Um, I usually confine it to a, a certain time of the year. Like I, I would build up to, to writing my books in January. Right. January, February. Um, now things have, you know, different things have thrown it out like this year. That or The last couple of years have been very awkward and difficult because of, because of the pandemic and because of other things as well. But I usually yeah. try to write in the winter when it's hard to go out. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. It's, it's interesting, and I suppose that's just your process now, and and that's how it yeah, works. It's the rhythm of the year now is built around it almost. Yeah. That's right. And so, Owen Madden, we we can expect another Owen Madden to come along soon. Yeah, like I said, it's he's the, the book is just finished. Just packed it off to the printers yesterday. So um, yeah. it's called Football Spirit. He actually um, he's finished in the summer. Summer he's, he's playing Gaelic Spirit. He goes back to school and it's transition year and he wants to try something different. So he uh, he takes up football and uh, off he goes and they have a little adventure around Daily Man Park and the ghost of a man called Liam Whelan. He used to play for Manchester United um, in Ireland and he was killed in the, the Munich air disaster. Right. So Owen gets to meet him and his friends and uh, they have a few adventures. And... It's a great concept for a book, the the way you've weaved the history part into sports. You've managed to combine everything that you love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is a little bit like, I mean, it's if, brilliant. If you, if, if you look at my bedside locker, the, the three things that are sitting there are, are books about sport, books about history and, and mysteries. So in a way, I, uh, I've just managed to combine all my my tastes and my, my interests. It's in brilliant. Work. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous I didn't think of it myself because I like the, the three things myself too. Yeah. Um, just a few general questions then. Your own, do you read kids all through other children's books yourself? I do, yeah, yeah. I, I read quite a few. Um, it's good to keep an eye on the opposition. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a fellow called Dave Hannigan who's written a couple of um, books about Gary football and um, which are really good. Um, yeah. There's a man called Joe O'Brien whose books... When I started writing mine, I, I, I read a lot of his and 
found them really, really good and inspiring. Um, he's a, he wrote a series in particular about Gaelic sports oh. called Tiger Boots, Little Croker, and Fail a Fever. It's a sort of a trilogy. Hmm. Um, and his books are great. And I actually became a pal of his. I, I, I see him all the time now. He, he works as a, as a landscape gardener and in a place near me. So uh, oh, very good. it's nice to bump into him. And he's a big, he's a, he's a, he was a big inspiration when I started. Oh, that's um, Emma Larkin's written some great books about kids as well. For, for yeah. Uh, um, um, so, yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't just read sports books for kids. Like, there's lots of other great books. I, I, Philip Pullman's books, I always buy his books and read them. Uh, and do, when you were younger, what did you read? When I show, I've read everything. I, 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 I found, as I always explain to kids when I'm in the library, that when I was their age, there wasn't, wasn't an awful lot of books. I mean, there might have been one one rack of shelves for kids instead of now there's almost a whole room for kids yeah so it was all the usual stuff Ian Blyton um uh, Rich Mall Crompton um uh, mostly English books as well because yeah. there weren't an awful lot of even fewer Irish books for kids um he still it was an English writer called P.G. Woodhouse who wrote great books for adults mostly wrote books for adults but he wrote a really good books of series of books for kids um about a boarding school um, and about sport, and mm. I read them 40 years ago, or 35 years ago, and it was, uh, I was really surprised when I reread them a couple of years ago, that they had clearly got into my psyche in some way or other, because right. I definitely have found inspiration from them in some way or other, so. That's the guy who books are, wrote books the Those books are 100 Jeeves. years old, and they're still... You know, got the Jeeves books, the, the, he wrote the Jeeves and Worcester as well, did he? Yeah, so, they're all those yeah, yeah. books for adults. Yeah, they're very funny writers. Oh, wow. Books for kids. Mike, Mike um, is the name of the character. Um, yeah, isn't that it. interesting that it was probably there? Because uh, I suppose we all, you know, had uh, are used to mysteries maybe from the famous five that everybody read. Yeah. So it's yeah. interesting that that that's there. Um, and I suppose my last question then is if you have any uh, advice for kids as writers. First of all, did you write as a kid? And if a kid or a younger person would wanted to be a writer, what should they be doing? I, I loved writing as a kid. It was one of the things that. That got me going and i suppose it's one it's the thing that has has made my career as well because i became a you know i became a journalist i became a, a book writer eventually as well so yeah when when i was small i used to read everything that that really was the thing um i was a very lucky i had a really good school teacher in primary school um mr coonan actually one of the characters is named after him in the book um mr coonan was very good at his big thing was, was creative writing. And at the time in schools, there wasn't an awful lot of that going on, but, he, but he, he was very modern thinking for the time. And he gave us a lot of advice and help on, on how to write short stories and, and poems. And, and I, found, I found when I sat down to write my very first novel, that advice on, that he had given me um, and tips that I hadn't heard for 40 years, were coming back to me. They were literally coming into my head wow. from him. And so I actually dedicated my first book to him and I sent him a copy. Um, so, yeah, the, I don't know what, I think the the most important thing I can give, I can get across is that you can't be a writer unless you're a reader. You really yeah. do. You have to read as much as you can. It's the only thing that that you need to be a writer is, is to be a, a good reader. Um, you pick up all the hints then you'll pick you know it's not things that you pick up deliberately you don't uh, have a notebook beside you saying i must make sure i use this word or i use a sentence this way it's just you will understand intuitively from from reading books that this is how a good sentence is written and yeah you learn about i mean i didn't have any formal grammar lessons in school because i just didn't do them in, the, in my school at the time but but I, I've got a decent command of grammar because I've read so much. Mm -hmm. And I think you just understand how how sentences work because you read so much. Um, yeah. So that's it. You just it's the only tip I can really give. That's brilliant. And and if you are if you want to be a writer, you've got to practice it. You've got to do something all the time. And when I was small, I used to write. And um, actually I found I found something here. I'm gonna wave it on the screen here. I don't know if you see it. Um 
Oh, yeah? I was cleaning out my office there recently, and I found this thing, um, which was a match report that I'd written about a soccer game I played when we were kids. And I guess, wow. I, I guess I was about seven or eight. And uh, anyway, that my dad obviously kept it for me and stuck it in. There's also a cartoon on the back of oh, the story wow. of the game, so, so it's all very... Uh, I you knew from a very young age what you wanted to be, obviously. Yeah, I mean, Dad encouraged me as well. My, my father was great for, maybe he saw something there that I that I had. I was never going to be a great footballer. I was never going to be a great a great player on any, any yeah. level. I just wasn't a sporty. Although I played every game there was, I just wasn't um, was active enough. Or, I mean, I died asthma, so I wasn't great. Yeah. You know, great fitness when I was a kid. But he used to encourage me to to write about every game we played in and or every game I watched or every game I went to. You know, he'd bring me to, to, to Crow Park or Daily Map Park. And when we got home, he'd say, sit down now and write 200 words about it. You know, there was obviously some incentive. He'd give me a, a toffee bar or a, yeah. or a few pence if I, if I did it. Yeah. But, you know, I had to write a 200 word match report on the yeah. game we've been to. And it, that sort of practice um, clearly had, had a bearing on what I, on what I yeah, meant. and you probably got you thinking about matches in a different way as well, you know, because you knew you're going to have to write, so you were probably really focused on what happened and all of that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I used to think that things like take notes then after a while, which was yeah, that became part of my life. You know? It it goes to show you as well. You even you, you can love sport and play and be part of it, but you, there's also other ways to to be involved in sport. Right, so, and and yeah. I think I think that's one of the things I try and get across in the book is. There's a character in the book called Alan, plays with Owen. Yeah. He's, he's not much of a player, Alan, but he he sort of loosely based on me because he was he was the kid who was almost was the analyst who, who was the one who watched out for right. what other teams were up to and he would take notes and he'd come up with he'd come up with ideas for 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 tactics and for formations and that sort of stuff. So um, yeah. Alan is a bit based on me. And I think there's loads of room for sport for, for people who can't play it very well. That's it. It's very interesting. And actually, wh- while you're talking about characters, I know I said it was my last question, but I have another one. There's a oh. character, Isaac, in the book, and you deal a little bit with racism in, in that. Was that kind of a thing you wanted to confront or discuss, or did it just kind of come about? No, it is something I think that, that I've, I've, I'm still involved a little bit in, in, in youth sports. So, and you see a lot, and, and it's fantastic. There are so many people who are, who are new to Ireland are are, are taking part in sport and getting yeah. involved in, in, in our you know our native sports as well as their own sports and and um I've seen a little bit of it going on and I think it was important that that this was highlighted and showed that Owen Owen was 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 keen to stand up to it and make yeah. sure people stamped it out because it's it's just not right. Yeah, I think yeah, it was nice. So there's a lot going on in the book, you know, and it's not it's a it's a nice read. It's not a difficult read. Do you have an age group in mind when you're writing? Um I think about nine, eight or nine year olds usually start with the books and, and yeah. find them. So Fun. then, but I find it goes up to, I suppose, 12 and 13 year olds. I, I, I talk to a lot of first year classes in, in secondary school as well. Right. And kids seem to still like them at that stage. So that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they I, always I, like to read, I think. Uh, kids have said to us they like to read a little bit older so they like to read about a kid that's a little bit maybe older than them not the exact same age exactly yeah yeah and well Owen's now I mean I started off with Owen in in very in in the in first year of primary in secondary school and he's now working so I hope he's in transition year at the moment so yeah um, but I, I'm taking it slowly <laughs> trying to, try to cram but the first year yeah. was like one year the yeah. second year was one year but after that he's been three books a year pretty much trying yeah. to slow yeah. it down ah that's interesting well thank you so much i think that went on a little bit longer than i had told you so i really appreciate it no, 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 no.